Good evening. I would like to call to order the May 1st, 2024 regular school committee meeting at 5.31 p.m. At this time, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn the <laughs> Sorry, this is from last month I copied over my nose. <laughs> At this time, I'll entertain a motion to enter into an executive session, which is a non-public session, uh, to approve the January 31st and April 10th executive session minutes and collective bargaining pertaining to the TTA teachers, ESP aides, custodians, secretaries, TAG, and nurses bargaining units. So moved. Second. Okay, so a motion by Mrs. B. Joni Smith, a second by Mr. Russo. Um, Mr. Uh, Moncada, how do you feel? Aye. <laughs> Mrs. Anderson? Aye. Mr. Russo? Aye. Ms. B. Joni Smith? Aye. And the chair votes aye as well. Um, so we will reconvene in uh, open session after executive session at 6.30 p.m. Just an explanation for why I'm so disheveled. We came rushing in after a wonderful reception we just had for volunteers out in the lobby. So um, forgive my disheveledness. Thank you. Doing <laughs> good.
Good evening. We reconvene the May 1st, 2024 regular school committee meeting at 6.31 p.m. Welcome. If we could all stand now for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. Join us. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Um, and before we um, get off to our first uh, uh, our announcement, regular school committee meeting will be televised and recorded, may be viewed live on Comcast Channel 22 and Verizon Channel 34 or on YouTube.com slash Tewksbury TV. Under the open meeting law, the public's permitted to make an audio or video recording of an open session at a public meeting. At this time, I'd ask if anybody is recording tonight's meeting to please identify themselves. And seeing nobody. Uh, before our first order of business, I just want to take a moment to recognize that before we had tonight's school committee meeting, we had a recognition of sorts uh, for volunteers in the Tewksbury Public Schools. What we decided to do this year was to hold um, a reception for volunteers, which I think was a nice start that I hope will continue on um, in future years and serve as a way to recognize the hard work of the volunteers in our district, whether it be from preschool, kindergarten, all the way up through boosters and graduations and senior year type activities. I think our schools don't run without our volunteers. April being volunteer month, it was fitting that we kind of put this out for people and ask them to join us, uh, but it's a busy time of year. So we might rethink some of the timing for next year and maybe how we how we do it, but we, I wanna thank all the volunteers that showed up. I wanna thank Tuxbury um, Food Services for uh, Food Nutrition Services for helping us uh, with the setup with the, the refreshments, it was lovely. So thank you and thank you to the volunteers that came. And I will now turn the floor over to Mrs. Terry O'Regan to introduce um, one of our recognitions. Okay, well, we have a wonderful team here to be recognized. Um, Ms. Mugford, I'm gonna ask all of our food and nutrition staff, please take a spot and uh, as a group over near the garden wall. And while you're doing that, I'll re I'm gonna say a little bit something before we have a recognition for you. So we can get all of the staff up and go over there, please. Madam Chair, member, uh, members of the committee, these staff members um, that who, who are being honored and recognized tonight not only feed our students and staff, but interact so positively with our students each and every day. Back in March, and you have this in your um, handout, back in March, it was National Nutrition Month, each school's kitchen staff designed fun activities, uh, they hosted presentations, they brought in outside presenters, some of those activities and presentations also connected to the literacy and learning done in, in um, the classroom and in health classes. They created wall displays from the students learning as well. You can see all the March events in this Food and Nutrition um, Service website and in this handout uh, that you have. And I want to thank all of you for being so awesome uh, and for the difference you make every day in the lives of our students and our staff. As I said, you not only feed us, you nurture us and Thank you so much. You're appreciated for that. So with that, um, Madam Chair, I, I think you have yep. recognition Ms. you want to make to the yes. team. And then after the recognition, are we going to invite Mrs. Uh, okay. Yeah, we'll take a picture of the whole group, and then Ms. Mugford will um, share some of the highlights that her team and herself have been working on. Um, so I was going to read all the names, but in light of butchering, um, last names. I'm going to just read the full recognition. So this is a resolution of recognition, whereas nutritious meals at school are an essential part of the school day, and whereas the staff of TPS Food and Nutrition Services are committed to providing healthful, nutritious meals to the district's children, and whereas the individuals who prepare and serve school meals help nurture our children through their daily interaction and support, and whereas the day of Friday, May 3rd, 2024 is School Lunch Hero Day, and we recognize our food services and nutrition service staff are heroes. Whereas the TPS Food and Nutrition Services staff have brought great pride, recognition, enthusiasm, and honor to themselves, to their families, to the Tewksbury Public Schools, and to the town of Tewksbury. Now therefore, be it resolved that Tewksbury Public Schools expresses its deep appreciation to these valuable employees and commends their good work on behalf of children. Thank you. 
So, um, Ms. Muckford, would you like your team to stay there as you present some of the amazing work they do, or should they go back to their seats? Um, well, first, so, okay. So, you all want to do anything, so we'll <laughs> <laughs> This is what you're all doing. Oh, yes. We have something that says something different on each of them. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Okay. And this is a reminder every day just how much of an impact you make in this district. So you will get these Friday when I go around to all the schools, but I just wanted you to see it. Yeah. It's a nice message. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> yes. So can we just take a, can we get a picture? Yeah. Um, so why don't you get back to, into the group and then, um, <laughs> So hold on, I'll wait for Jason to give us the sign. We need to scoot in. All right, let's get close together. Thank you. Um, it, the picture will be taken from this front camera. How's that, Jason? All right. One. Oh, Katie. Two. Ready? Oh. Okay. Three. Got it. Thank, you. Thank you. You're welcome to take a seat oh. while. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. Oh my God. <laughs> As I said, Ms. Mugford, our Director of Food and Nutrition Services, um, is going to do a brief presentation on the highlights and some of the uh, improvements um, being looked at in our food and nutrition service. Before we start the presentation, are there any comments or? Oh. Thoughts from the committee regarding the, the recognition of the employees for the food nutrition services? I mean, just thank you. I know my kids love what you guys do. I love what you guys do. So please keep it up and you know, thank you. Yeah, I'll just say my um, son has been turned on to many more foods that I would have never turned up on to if it wasn't for you guys. So from our family, thank you very much. Mr. Russo? Yeah, uh, keep, keep, keep feeding kids, right? And that's what we keep hearing, and that's, uh, that's an incredible thing. Uh, it really does nourish uh, and get our kids ready for the day, so we appreciate those efforts. Thank you. I just want to say thank you for the new, like all the social media posts that have been coming out. It's really great to see what's going on in the kitchens and see the lettuce wall and all the things that are happening. It's exciting to see the behind the scenes and see what's coming out of the kitchen and what's out there for everybody, especially for the parents that have kids in the younger grades as they move up, get to see what the different options are and see some of the faces that the kids are going to see every day. So I appreciate all of that. So keep that up, please. Thanks. And my only comment, um, Rich and I both have had an opportunity to be in a few of the schools recently where we've actually gone through the line, eaten lunch, um, and you guys have been great. I, I can't even say enough. Seeing the interaction between you personally and the students, it makes such an impact in their day. You can see these kids, their faces, they light up, they ask for you by name, they, you are an intricate part of their day. And so for anybody who doesn't spend time in the schools, I don't think they have any idea. I mean, some of us have kids that might tell us whatever, but um, I just, I wanna thank you all so, so much for making the connections with the students. Um, and we're gonna hear about the nutrition, the food, but really for me, the impact that you're making in their lives, for some of these kids, I think you're the, you're the highlight of their day. So thank you so much. That's honestly deep from my heart. Yes, okay, and Ms. Mugford. Okay then, so um, first let me start by saying again, kudos to this team because I'm gonna, I'm gonna wow you with some highlights from the department and honestly, it's their passion, everything that they do is absolutely magnificent. Um, so anyhow, so I think everybody has a brochure that I had provided. So if you look in the insert of the brochure, it has highlights. Well, there were way too many highlights for us to bring to this meeting because you'd be here till tomorrow. So what we chose are just a few things to highlight so that we, you know, in an effort of time, okay? So, and bear with me because the link issue, I was having anxiety about the links, so. <laughs> so anyhow, let's start by, um, First saying that when we left last year and when we spoke to the school committee and, and gave some information, one of our goals when we left the district was for this year to engage, to educate, and to celebrate with the kids. And you will see clearly when we go through this, we've met every quota and then some. So I couldn't be more proud of the department. So I'm gonna start with the universal school meals. 
obviously, we all know that we have universal free meals, thus we have an incredible increase in our participation. Breakfast, um, lunch, and that's just, this, that percentage is just reimbursable meals. That does not include all the other, you know, the seconds, the a la carte, the, um, um, all the after school programs, beginning school programs, the catering, there's a lot of other programs, summer programs. This is strictly universal free meals that are reimbursable for the USDA in the state, okay? So um, with the universal free meals, Again, our participation has increased so much, but yet we're still trying with all the, the, you know, the busyness that we are, we're trying to bring so many new things to the menus. So I'm proud to say that um, some things that you don't know, and it's funny because you said behind the scenes, and that's kind of a theme for next year, just so you know, mm -hmm. um, that people don't realize is that on the menus, we actually have meatless Mondays. So what we've been serving is a lot of cheese-based stuff, but then I was talking to some parents and they're like, Deb, you know, in fact, they've even shared some recipes. Can we try some more beans and more veggie? So we're working with some parents to do that. The staff here has been magnificent in taste tests, so we kind of get some feedback with that. So I think I put the, um, the ethnic in everybody's folder. Mm -hmm. I think it's in here. Is it on this, Kate? Kate? Kate's my IT girl. Kate? Kate? Mm -hmm. So this is just an idea of some of the things that we've done. We actually just had a meeting, our manager's meeting this morning, and we talked about menus for next year, and we're trying to come up with some really creative ideas, okay? So um, to introduce all the global flavors, we're using a lot more um, um, fresh ginger, fresh garlic, all that sort of thing, because naturally a lot of those recipes. Um, so then, we don't go into this blindly. We have taste tests. So we have the meatless Mondays, and then we have, this is the one that's down here. So when we introduce something new, naturally, if we didn't have a taste test and we do it, and, we've, and trust me, we've learned from mistakes, right? We'll introduce it and all of a sudden, I'll be getting phone calls from the staff saying, do you know how, how hard this recipe is? Or, you know, or we have to do so many of the alternative meals because the kids aren't liking it. So we have this taste test, and I'm really excited about this because what we did at the high school is we um, just started the QR code because we were walking around asking the kids, we just have this QR code and look at the engagement with the kids. Mm -hmm. Isn't that fantastic? So we're getting so much information from them now and they're writing things down saying, we don't, you know, um, can you introduce more of this? Can you do that? So it, we're trying to be engaged with the kids, but yet the kids are engaging with us. So it's, it's really a win-win situation. So um, anyhow, so that's what we're doing. So then we have the Fresh and Local, we called it on our menu Fresh and Local Fridays. We never really promoted it like that, but really, truly, every day in Tewksbury Food Service is fresh because we order from local when we can. As an example, we were waiting for our apples today. They didn't come because the orchard didn't have them. So, I mean, sometimes you get stuck naturally. Um, but it, basically, we serve fresh every day. Let me just get out of this and the new and ethnic recipes. And then we have um, increased daily options. So at the Wind School, Joyce, you have them right Joyce. Yep, Joyce at the Wind School. She's the manager of the Wind School. She's really excited. We just talked about it this morning. They just introduced a new station. We bought some equipment um, for cold grab and go. So even though we had alternatives on the line, we initiated some other things. So she's doing some grab and go salads, some grab and go, um, you know, selected sandwiches and that sort of thing. So that's been very, very successful. So then we have at the high school, in addition to all the stations that they have, a hot grab and go. <laughs> so we're, and that's been extremely successful as well. So they're serving whether it be sandwiches or um, Asian chicken and um, sweet and sour chicken and rice, the whole, so, because what happens is that sometimes we know kids that they're impatient and if they don't want to wait in line for the meal, they go and they grab it. And, and we've gotten such great feedback from the kids on that. Um, so we're happy about that. And at the elementary schools, we increased and added another lunchbox. So we're trying to give all the kids more options. And then we have, of course, our taste test kitchen. Our taste test kitchen was part of the, the, the slide I just showed you. We had 14 this year. 14 new taste tests, and um, it was a great way to, you know, to engage the kids, the strategy that we had, but we had no idea when we did this QR code how, how happy and how successful. It was a win-win for the students, it's a win-win for the staff. Um, 
In addition, the kids, and I don't know, I mean, I know some of you have heard of it because we talked about it at Wellness. They have, um, the students here at Tewksbury High have started their own app. It's called the TMHS Food Critic app. Now it's interesting because when people say, oh, how are you with that? I go, I think it's the greatest thing, do we not? Because we see so many things that we think the kids like and they'll come back and say, oh, we don't like it. Or So I'm just gonna share with you. So we have our Merrimack College intern who did some research for us. So she went through the whole food critic so there's one, two, three, four, five stars, right? So we're looking okay with our four. Does this have to go down, maybe? So we're looking, I mean, four is pretty high. That's a lot to be said. So our goal next year is to have that five at the top. But so this helps us. This is such a fantastic tool for us because it will go back, like Lisa will say, oh, they didn't like this, and you know, what would, and they say to them, you had too much cinnamon in it, or you had too much of something in it. So this is really a great tool for us. And, and, the, and I have to say, the Tewksbury students have been very responsible, very respectful. They, they, I, I'll tell you, I'm, I'm wowed by them. And I think it's great because, again, here we are wanting to engage kids, and we're trying, how do we do it? And then yet they're giving us the information we have. So it's a great source. So what I put up there as well, um, I figured I'd kill two birds with one stone here, is that you can see there's that, that menu um, with the meatball sub. So Rich and um, um, Bridget, you said you went around to the school. So you know that we offer four veggies, you know, several veggies. So that person decided to take that. But in reality, that person could have had every single one of those on their tray. So I just wanted to clarify that because under the USDA guidelines, we have to offer five male components. We offer seven, eight, you know, we offer the five male components, but in addition to that we offer, of which they have to take three. Of the three, one of them has to be a fruit and vegetable. So this tray, they have their grain, they meet their grain requirement, and they meet their protein requirement, and they have their vegetable. So technically, they could have got, had that as a reimbursable meal without the milk. So I just kind of wanted to put that out there because there seems to be some confusion about it. So I hope that was helpful. So then we have, um, and we just had a meeting, so we're grateful for that because this morning we had a meeting. We had Sh um, Chef Patty. Chef Patty is a mentor that we have from Framingham State University um, from the John Stalker Institute. She's been here for nine weeks. Her next week, last week is next week. She has worked at the, um, the WIN, and that's how we started implementing, help, you know, help give some guidelines in terms of um, the flow of the kitchen um, because we know, we don't know everything, and when you have another lens in there, it's always helpful to have another set of eyes and, you know, and give you some advice. So she's worked at the Wynn and she's worked at the high school. She was with us this morning because we want to, you know, vamp up our menu next year, especially with the fruits and vegetables, because that's our strategy for getting the kids to really, so we're doing all kinds of recipes, whether it's roasted or, I mean, all these different things that Patty has um, provided to us. So she attended this meeting all day today, and um, we're planning our menus for next year, so we're really excited about it. Okay, so let me move on to fresh and local. Fresh and local, so, fresh and local is something we've always done here in Tewksbury, at least since I've been here, since 2000, to, when I started as a director, I think in 2009, we've always done farm to school. We've always been a supporter of farm to school, always. We've always perched local, whether it's apples from Brooksby or Little Leaf. Um, but fortunately now, all districts in uh, Massachusetts received a grant. It's called the Northeast Foods Grant. So everybody has it. So everybody's ordering from them because they made it easier for us to procure. Because food service procurement is very, very, it's, it's crazy. Um, and so when we had to order, um, produce before, you had to every week go through four people, check the part, I mean, it was all a lot of red tape. So the Department of Ed and um, Northeast Foods worked together collaboratively to develop this program for us so that districts could order and not have the hassle of procurement. So it cuts down the red tape. It gives us, so we're ordering now through a hub. So you can go through Boston Food Hub or Worcester Food Hub. So we order through them. Um, with no problems, and they might have a list of 10 farms. Now they've added maple syrup onto their local, they've added cheese onto their local, they've added, they've added so many things onto their local, it's amazing. So we're kind of trying to come up with some ideas because this is stuff we need, like the cheese, like the cheese curds, we just had cheese curds on, our, on one of our recipes, local. I mean, we're just, we're just, we're in awe because like what can we do with this stuff? So, um, so anyhow, fresh and local is something that we've been doing um, 
for quite some time. Fortunately, we have some more grants. So one of the things we, we have a problem with is the kids eating their fruits and vegetables, right? Mm -hmm. So we had this campaign. So we have Bury the Bulldog. So the, this promotion is, they have them at all the, all the schools. So the Ryan is the Bulldog. The Center School is a Dragon. Each one of these has a different one in your, in your thing. Um, the, the Heathbrook is the Penguin. The Doing School is the Owl. So the, so the kids can recognize it, and they kind of develop a relationship. Oh, you know, we're trying to get them excited about eating, eating um, the fruits and vegetables, to fill their tray with our fruits and vegetables. So, and then, da-da, there's the star of the day over there. A hydroponic garden. There you go. You can't get any more local than that. Mm -hmm. um, right now we have, she just did her harvest and cut. Um, we've already had two harvests, um, and, and we've supplied it with the, the um, high school. Our goal is to get more local. So, and I, I know I, we, there's a lot of ideas behind that, but we'll keep you all on your toes. And, um, but there are some ideas of what we want to do next year with some of that stuff. But we're really, you know, I'm going to be honest. Were we intimidated? Oh, yeah. <laughs> right, Kate? Um, but then after we got used to it and everything, it was like, wow, this is really great. And I can't tell you, and the manager, Lisa, are the kids coming here, looking at it? The teachers are inter inter integrating it into some of their lessons. Mm. Same with some of our ethnic recipes. So I mean, we're, we're getting a lot of great feedback for stuff like that. So that makes it all worthwhile. It's rewarding, right? And then, hold on a sec. Let me just share this with you as well. I left, I, I gave everybody a copy of this just for safety reasons because um, I got a little nervous with the whole IT thing. So you all have a copy as well. So this is what we call um, the terrific tray. So what Desi and Northeast Foods has asked us all to do is to submit trays with all of their produce. So if you can see for here, the lettuce, little leaf, the um, um, tomatoes, I believe a backyard. The apple is Carson, and the beef is Walden beef. So, I mean, look at the local we have on the tray. I could have ordered the French fries, but I didn't order them soon enough to get the fresh. So, this is the stuff that we're trying to do. Okay. All right. So, moving right along. So, you will see in your brochures, um, and I put that, and I put a little um, paragraph in there because what we try to do every year in food services um, is to really evaluate the program. How are we going to make it better? We think we're great. As a matter of fact, we know we're great. We're magnificent, <laughs> but we can make it better. We're not, you know, we're not, you know, we're not that naive. We want to get better and better and better. So every year we have a, um, a meeting with the staff. Last year we had one-on-one. -on -one with every single staff member for 45 minutes, and we talked about what the strength and the weaknesses, the opportunities, the threats to the program were. What we found was, well, there were a couple of things, obviously, but what we saw was the equipment was such an issue because equipment's breaking down because you're using it more, right? Then some of the things that we're doing, some of the new recipes, we may not have had the equipment that we needed for that. There were a lot of things that played into this, and. A lot of stuff was outdated. So equipment became, we realized how important the equipment was. So we are investing in equipment. So I provided a, a I, Kate and I went through this real quick. We may have left stuff out, but this is the stuff that we're doing. I mean, there's, there's a lot of equipment there. I mean, there's, you know, we're, we're estimating probably a half million in equipment altogether, just so you know. So it's, we're so excited. The problem, here's one issue that the challenge that we're facing, however, is um, the supply. So we were fortunate we just installed a tilt skillet and a range, a double steamer at the doing, right? That's what we had to do it. The, the Heathbrook was supposed to have the dish machine installed over school break. It wasn't ready. So now we're waiting for May. So, and then in the summer, so the doings, um, <laughs> doings cools went down. So we're, we're, we're using some of the stand-up ones. In the summer, the doing is getting a brand new walk-in cooler and walk-in freezer built. And at the Heathbrook, they're getting probably, oh gosh, they're getting a tilt skillet that they don't have. There's stuff that the Heathbrook didn't have because of the age of, of the, and what we were cooking before is different. We're going back into more scratch cooking, so we need the tilt skillet to saute and to do whatever we need to do. Um, so over the summer, our goal is to get the Heathbrook done. However, 
we're struggling with the representatives and manufacturers in getting this. We thought we had so much time because for a year we've been talking about it. But then it's like, okay, now you're going to get the, you know, all the, all the different logistics and everything else that go involved. But anyhow, so we have a lot planned for that and we're really excited. Lisa's been doing dances with her tilt skillet because mm -hmm. she's never cooked in one. You're having to, are, you, are you having training tomorrow on that or did we mix that? No? Not tomorrow, right? <laughs> For the tilt skillet? Yes, we are, 9 a.m. 9 a.m. It was set last night. So we're having training. So <laughs> very, very exciting stuff. OK. Then we go to nutrition education. Truly, this is my passion. I'm going to be honest, OK? Um, and as you know, and as you see from the slides, and it, as Brenda mentioned, I think I have to go here, right, Kate? My little, yeah. As Brenda mentioned, some of the things that these, um, this staff did is amazing. So what we do, we've been doing this for years. What we do, and they all, oh, what are we going to do? And they all try to, you know, a little, little competition going, right? Um, but there's nothing more rewarding than working with the kids, seeing the kids, seeing the outcome, seeing the success, seeing how it impacted. Um, but they all do their own thing. What school's going to do what? They all do their own thing. They all come up with their own ideas. It's not from me. It's from them. It's all their hard work, their dedication, their loyalty. And I've got to be honest, their love for the kids. Um, so anyhow, so I can't even, I was so proud of that. So we actually sent um, the video out for the high school that um, some of the other people, other districts want to use because it's kind of behind the scenes because people don't realize. You know, education is key, even when you have to educate people about the program, right? So we thought that was really a, a really great thing. And they did, they did absolutely, absolutely fantastic. Um, by leveraging, so we, I, I was in a meeting probably 10 years ago talking to someone, and we're all talking um, about marketing and this and that. And so the gentleman says to me, Deb, don't you realize you have the biggest classroom in the school? Think about it. it. Really, truly, the the environment of the classroom. So we we're trying to utilize that. We're trying to post things. We have staff that are, and I'm thinking of Jules, Julie, when she's doing the. Um, she goes on the computer and she does some funny things with broccoli dancing and puts it out for the kids to see. And this is why you need it. This is stuff they're doing on their own because of the. You know, it's just fantastic. So, the bottom line is we're serving kids food, and we all our our thing was always. Feeding kids is what we do, but I'm here to say that's not all we do because not only that, but these ladies are providing smiles. I was at the center school, what, you guys, kids were coming up saying, will you come to the Peter Plan, here's a ticket. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's how they roll, right? So anyhow, um, I couldn't even be more proud. Look for more to come, trust me, okay? So um, I want to say that um, supporting initiatives are coming. I will keep you posted and um, stay tuned for behind the scenes. <laughs> so thank you, everybody. Thank you, Tim. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, any comments from the committee? Mr. Moncada. Thank you. I'm good. Okay. Thank you, Mrs. Anderson. Mr. Russo. Uh, this is excellent. I appreciate, uh, first of all, uh, Ms. Mugford, you joining us, and, and it's great to have all your staff here, or most of your staff here. Um, just a couple thoughts uh, from my perspective. Um, so with, I know you, you showed a list of all the equipment upgrades, mm -hmm. and I know we've been working with Mr. Libby on the budget, and um, you know, food services obviously has a revolving account that money is coming in, and obviously money is going out as things get purchased and whatnot. Um, so the equipment upgrades that you showed, is there is that going to continue to facilitate, you know, just, you know, again, more freshly prepared foods and things of that nature mm -hmm. to allow, you know, more choices, I guess, at, at all the different schools, you know, whether, regardless of whether or not they're the high school or the, or the win. Um, is, that, is that equipment going to help facilitate more of that? Well, naturally, yes, but it also, um, you have to consider labor too, because we're going to scratch. So it's, some of the stuff that we're doing is extremely labor intensive. I'm asking this staff, oh, here's a new recipe. You know what they say? Come on, Debbie, will ya? Yeah. And then we go through it. And then, if, and I mean, the doing school was without equipment. For, I mean, you were struggling. So this equipment is not only a bonus to enhance the program in terms of menus, yeah. but also for labor. Okay. Okay, excellent. And then with, and this might be more of a question for you, Mr. Libby, I'm not sure, but I mean, in terms of, uh, you know, with the revolving account that we have, you know, in terms of staffing, are we staffed appropriately 
at all the schools right now in terms of being able to facilitate those options, whether it's a salad bar, a sandwich bar, a hot plate bar, whatever, you know, I, again, I know it varies from school to school. Um, but if we're not, you know, can we be using some of those funds in that revolving account to facilitate whether, again, it's additional resources at for, What do you schools? mean, for food service? For yeah. insurance? Yes. Correct. So we're actually out pursuing that now. Um, and. Um, so the way the department works is, it's called the meal pro labor hour. That's how we do things in food service. So we look at the meals that we're serving. We look at the environment. So say, hypothetically, this school may, sell, uh, may serve 500 lunches, and this school may serve 500 lunches, but this school may have a couple extra people because of the format of the kitchen, sure. because they may have a dish machine, because they have four or five lines. They have more alternatives. So we go through, so when we look at that, we look at male participation, and yes, we are understaffed. That's something that we're working on. I have to say, again, kudos to the team, because we've been understaffed at the school for quite some time, and we've had their teammates at other schools rotating their staff. So there may be a day that Allison's struggling at the Ryan School and her staff, because one of her members went to another school. There may be a day that Laura is struggling with her staff because one of her members went to another school and the high school as well. So those are the three schools we're kind of pulling from to move people because we're a team. Okay. But we are trying to fill positions. Okay. We have our fingers crossed right now. <laughs> um, and I have a couple of more interviews and we have it on School Springs. We had it on the menu. I mean, we're going, we have to aggressively go after some positions, absolutely. Ms. Munkford, how many, how many resources are you down today? today if, if, it was a, if it was an ideal situation, how many resources more would you need? Two, three, four, are we five? Five, five, five. right now, I think, right? Am I right, ladies? Okay. All right, and then I guess just my last question, because you did bring it up, um, in regards to uh, equipment and um, whether it's, you know, maintenance work needs to be required. Do we have um, a contract in place that will do maintenance regular, you know, whether it's annually, uh, maintenance of that equipment at each of the schools? We do. Yes, we do, absolutely. We've had it for years. So we have to go out. So in food services, the, the whole logistics of everything is, is pretty comprehensive in terms of procuring. Like, even if we get a piece of equipment, not only do we have to go out for a bid on that, but then I have to go to DESE and get approval from them. Okay. So there's a lot of steps involved in that, but and also in our in our service. So we have a we send out every year a request for maintenance for our um, refrigeration and a request for the maintenance technicians for our um, equipment. So we do that every year. Okay. And then of course our hood cleaning. I mean I can I can go on and on, but we have to go out for for, for a bit on those. So some are, some are requests for quotes. Some are. Yeah, solicitation, so okay. it depends on, it depends on the, the, um, the amount. Okay. okay, and then just to circle back, for the five resources that you're down, are you actively recruiting for all five? Yeah, because right now, they're, okay. for right now, we are. Okay, I just, I, just want, I just want you to understand, from, at least from my perspective, and I certainly don't want to speak for the rest of the committee, but I want to be able to make sure that you're supported that Thank way. Thank you, we appreciate that. Thank you. If, but you know what I will say? Um, Mr. Russo, is, what's funny is, so we've been putting that out there on school, spring, school, spring, school, spring on that menu. All of a sudden, last week I get three, three nothing happens, and all of a sudden three pe people are applying. Mm -hmm. Because I think what people are doing, they're anticipating their child's going to mm -hmm. kindergarten or first grade. Yeah. So this is actually a good time because we'll, I'll be interviewing people. But I, I truly am like, why are they coming now? And, and, and I know, I mean, I think we all basically started for the same reason, right? Our priority was home with our families, and we wanted to be here, and we did the, so I think Think that that's probably why, quite honestly. Okay. I can't, I'm just that's a total assumption, but okay. I it makes sense, it. right? I appreciate mm -hmm. your input. Thank you. You all set? All set. Thank okay, Mrs. P. Jones. Thanks. Just to piggyback on that, I was actually it was, staffing was one of my questions, and I was going to ask that about the attrition with parents that have kids that phase out of the school age and in and out. So that's good to hear that that's possibly a reason, you know, for some of that, if that type of attrition plays into the, the yeah. onboarding with new people, new parents that maybe are looking for jobs. Um, so I think that everybody's done such a great job. The transparency for me has been wonderful since, you know, we, I think we've had some conversations, whether it's been at wellness or 
um, wherever it's been along the way. Um, I love the transparency. I love seeing what's happening. I think it helps parents who are sending their kids to school with an empty lunchbox because of all the great things that they think are happening to now be able to see all of that. I think the only place that I would love to see some movement is with our breakfast options, mm -hmm. um, maybe kind of working away from some of the prepackaged things. So that's a good point because we actually we actually are in, I don't know if everybody saw the, the, the flyer inside the insert of your thing about the, like, the USDA. The potato. The child nutrition. Yes. So, and not this year, but the following year, they're gonna set some standards in reducing the ch sugar. Right now, there are no restrictions. Right. So they're gonna start reducing it. So we, we actually just had the talk, you know, today at our manager's meeting, you know, next year, we're gonna be ahead of the curve. We're not gonna, you know. So in with breakfast now, when we were serving the two grains, you know, some of the, sh the carbohydrates, the sugar, and it was higher. So now what we did is we went to one grain and offered a cheese stick. A lot of kids, which, it's hard because some schools we saw the participation go down. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's hard. You get to feed kids what they want to eat. Yeah. You know? So we're trying, we're trying to improvise. We're trying to do the right thing. We're trying to get the kids to eat. Um, so per perfect point because that is on the child nutrition standard. And that's awesome. And some of it's like a mentality shift too. Like you don't necessarily think a cheese stick is a great breakfast thing, but it really is. It's a good thing to put on there and shift from, you know, whatever the other option could have been, the donut or the bagel or whatever. Um, but yeah, that would be my only thing. I love everything else that's been done since we've had some conversations. And I think that your staff is doing an incredible job. I, again, I, I just would love to keep seeing more of it and um, continue to share that because I think you might have even seen on your social medias and all that, the participation and the feedback Back and the support from families, I think, is probably there now mm -hmm. um, that maybe you, you weren't much. seeing before. But yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you. I think everybody. Um, and then my only words, um, I think, as I complimented the staff, is to compliment you on your positive energy because I think um, they're positive and they're wonderful and amazing because of you. And thank um, you. so I, you know, I thank you for. I um, sing a lot for leading them, <laughs> leading them in that way. Or do um, I not sing it? <laughs> And then later on, we'll be discussing um, our, the wellness policy. I, I just want to say thank you so much for your work on that. Mm -hmm. um, for and possibly your staff doesn't even know how hard you work um, on things you know that are at that level uh, to work with Jesse to bring us into that loop, um, and also with Kelly Constantino with you know the lead nurse. I think your work on the on the wellness policy. You probably won't be here when we get there. So I, I'd like to say that to you directly um, that you know that work was very much appreciated. Thank so. you. I appreciate that. Thank yeah. you. Thank and you. I think um, just in general, the work on the wellness committee, I'm, I'm so excited to see kind of a little bit of a revival there and um, any support. And I said this at the wellness committee that I went to recently that we can offer because I think anything that will tie in what you're doing, what health services is doing, what they're doing with, you know, physical education and bringing all that together and then even some mental health stuff is so important and I think that's work that if I can humbly speak for everybody we all support mm -hmm. greatly so um, and that committee I think could really make it happen so you, you had it going well before COVID and you just have to kind of get through that little hump yeah. but thank you so much um, and again I kind of uh, echo Mr. Russo a little bit on the equipment really excited to see the kitchens getting um, some of the things that they've needed um, whether they've broken or just didn't have them because they're old buildings or whatever. Um, I'm excited for that. I hope it helps um, in terms of, you know, uh, just getting food to kids that they want to eat and that it makes your days easier um, and more manageable. So anything again, morale, certainly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right? Anything we can do to support that too. Thank you. So, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Ms. Monfrey. And Mrs. Regan, anything? No, I, I, I think awesome. Again, thank you for all you do. Um, you truly are in the heroes in our school. Um, I watch as kids go through the line, as Ms. Garabedian said, and just get that laugh every morning, and then again in the at the lunchtime, and the relationships are, I, I, I didn't experience that when I was a student going through the lunch line, so thank you for having that for our kiddos now. Okay. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you. Okay, and seeing as Rania is not here with us tonight, she um, traveled out of state for DECA. So um, we'll hear her updates at the end of the month. Um, next, we have uh, Citizens Forum. Is there anybody here to speak on Citizens Forum? And if any of you need to leave, feel free. Um, you know, it's, you can always watch us on Tuxbury TV. 
Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. You got it? You got it? Thanks. Um, and was anybody here for the before, Mr. Chu? No? Okay. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> You're the only person I noticed. Okay. Um, so moving on from that, um, we have the approval of minutes, and we'll start. We'll go hand over to Mr. Mokata. Yeah. So motion to uh, approve the minutes from April 10, 2024 meeting. I'll second. Okay. A motion uh, by Mr. Mokata, second by uh, Mrs. Anderson. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. And that passes unanimously to approve the minutes. And next, Mr. Moncada. Yeah, I have these out of order, but it's, I think that doesn't matter. We're going to uh, move to uh, the school department payroll for the period ending uh, 425 2024 to be approved and certified in the amounts and categories as shown for the amount of $1,552,006.84. I'll second that. Okay, and uh, so this is for the a motion by Mr. Moncada, second by Mr. Russo to approve and certify the payroll period. Um, well, geez, what was the date on that? It was the April 25th. April 25th for $1,552,084. $6.84. $6.84. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, how, how do you vote, Mr. Moncada? Aye. Mrs. Anderson? Aye. Mr. Russo? Aye. And Mrs. B. Johnny Smith? Aye. And I vote aye as well for a unanimous vote. And I move the school department payroll for the period ending 4 11 24 to be approved and certified in the amounts and categories as shown for a total amount of $1,602,668.73. I'll second that. Okay. And we have a motion by Mr. Moncada, second by Mr. Russo um, to certify the payroll period ending 4 11 24 for $1,600,000. million six hundred and two thousand six hundred sixty eight dollars and seventy three cents how do you vote mr Mercado? Aye. mr anderson aye mr russo aye mr b joni smith aye and i vote aye as well for a unanimous vote and for our superintendent and staff reports i'll start with our superintendent mrs terry regan Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, first and foremost, uh, May is a full month of recognition in our schools. Let me just give you a rundown a little bit. Today was Principal's Day. Tonight we honored our school volunteers. This Friday is National School Lunch Hero Day, as we just talked about. Tomorrow morning is a celebration and recognition of academic excellence at Tuxpray Moore High School for our high-achieving seniors receiving cum laude, magna cum laude, and summa cum laude awards with regalia they'll adorn for graduation. Next week is Teacher Appreciation Week, and next week is Nurse Appreciation Week. Tonight we honored our dedicated school volunteers, and as we all know, it takes that whole village to make our schools a nurturing and wonderful place to be so our students can thrive. And even though Administrative Assistance Day and Custodians Day already happened earlier this school year, I truly encourage our families and students to thank and share their gratitude to any and all of the essential members within the Tuxbury Public School community this month. Everyone that dedicates their time, whether as paid jobs or volunteers, all have an important role in the lives of our students. And from the bottom of my heart, for those who are here and those who are watching, uh, I want you to know how much you are appreciated. And that includes you, our members of the school committee. So thank you for all that you do for us as well. And on the top of, of It Takes a Village, our VFW leaders are hoping to continue with the Voice of Democracy and Patriots Pen Contest in support to our students. I know they were just here, but the themes next year are, is America Today, Our Forefathers' Vision, and My Voice in America's Democracy democracy respectively. Mr. Oliveira and Mr. Williams have shared these contest guidelines with us early now and so that we can get more students involved. Plus they have announced that this form in your packet tonight will go digital. Our principals in the district will provide this information in our respective newsletters. Um, Let's talk a little bit about fine and performing arts. Last week was a week of amazing events for our performing arts program. I'll speak about the high school's drama department spring musical, The Adams Family. The show was simply amazing from the stage sets, the acting, the singing, the music, and the dancing. I was captivated from the very first note. It truly was amazing. And bravo to our drama students, but also to the directors, Ms. Celeste Pellegrino and Mr. David Moffat, all the teachers and musicians and parent volunteers who supported the show. I was also just so impressed at how many young children and families 
families came to the show, and so many of the children were dressed as either Wednesday Adams or Pugsley Adams. They were so cute. Again, bravo to the Tuxbury Memorial High School drama group. Um, our Tuxbury Memorial High School Rocket League, our esports team, players, Peter Impink, Tofi Bayloon, and Santiago Avendano defeated the Shrewsbury High School CEOs last Thursday afternoon in four straight games of their best ever seven match. The team will now be heading off to Patriots Place uh, to, in Foxborough tomorrow um, to play the semifinals match against Braintree High School. Um, our Rocket League is looking to win their fourth state championship in a row. And if anyone is interested, you can watch the match live stream tomorrow at 5 p.m. and it's at twitch.tv slash P-L-A-Y-V-S. I'll say that again, twitch.tv slash P-L-A-Y-V-S. Another high school update. Uh, the high school hosted a college and career fair just before the April break. You can see in the consent agenda the long list of 56 colleges, universities, institutions, and branches of the U.S. military that were present. All of our juniors and many of our sophomores had the opportunity to attend the fair and speak to representatives from each of those institutions. The guidance team created a survey with a QR code so our students can give feedback of um, their experience and so that they can continue to upgrade and bring in other organizations. Um, I think it's appropriate to thank Christine Frondudo for organizing the event and thank you to our student council representatives for assisting all of the presenters with parking and logistics as they came here during the school day. Another high school um, update. Over the next two weeks, we will be administering 394 AP tests at the high school in 16 different AP courses. Thank you to Karen O'Brien for her continued leadership and the guidance team and the many proctors who facilitate this major task for our high school students. I think that's impressive because remember this is the first year where uh, the AP test is actually optional. Mm. But that, that's quite a few uh, students in the varied courses taking that, that exam. Not a high school update, but we have other schools in the district. This one comes from the Doing School. Desi recently visited our Doing 21st Century After School program. Since this is our sixth year of funding for this program, um, we must adhere to a stringent set of guidelines to keep its exemplary status, which is what we currently have. The minimum score needed was 60. The program received a score of 78. We are also very proud of the effort and hard work that goes into the planning and the implementation of the curriculum for this program. Dr. Bastieri also noted one exceptional comment regarding the integration of special needs students who were, quote, fully integrated, accepted, and able to participate fully in all the activities, end quote. The collaboration of our 21st century program staff is extraordinary, and it is to be commended. I'm, we're so grateful that Dr. Bastieri and the team continues to uh, seek out the funds for this program. A quick update on the interim director of student services and special ed process. Today, the poster, posting for the Interim Director of Student Services and Special Ed closed. We only have one applicant, but I can tell you that um, that applicant is our current acting director of student services and special education, I would say the most highly qualified administrator to take on this role for Tuxbury Public Schools. So therefore, given the post and close today, um, I will bring my formal recommendation for the director role forward at the May 22nd school committee meeting to the committee for a vote. Tomorrow, I do plan to post an anticipated opening for the interim assistant director of student services and special ed so we can get that process going as well. Again, and I'll have more details to share on both roles at the next um, school committee meeting, May 22nd. And that concludes my updates for tonight. Thank you. Um, questions or comments, Mrs. B. Johnny Smith? No, oh, none. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Russo? No, appreciate the updates. Um, I know it's going to be a very busy next few weeks, so <laughs> we'll keep moving along. <laughs> okay, thank you. Ms. Anderson? Uh, just a quick question. Um, of the 394 AP tests, what percentage is that of? the AP students, is that? Uh, 
I, I, I don't have that number. Yeah. I know it's very high. Okay. I want to say, I think we reported that we were like at 80 something percent. I thought, I, I thought I was gonna say, I thought it was even higher than that. Closer I'll, than I'll, that. I'll get that information for yeah. you though, but it is very high. Okay. Um, and again, being optional, we just really didn't right. know. Right, but, um, no, that's yeah. great. Good. That was it, thank you. Sure. Mr. Moncada? My only question was, um, I may, and I may have missed it, was the uh, college fair, it was held where? It was held here in okay. the high, at the high school yeah. on the half day Friday before uh, the April break. Okay, yep, gotcha, thank very, you. Very, very busy event, it's wonderful. We'll have to make sure you have that on your yeah. end of year calendar for I next year. Add it to the list. <laughs> <laughs> True. Um, and I don't really have any comments. Um, I look forward to um, seeing how the, the new assistant role uh, you know, if there's what the interest is in that. So, yeah, it's about my only comment, but thank you for the updates. And um, Mrs. McDermott. Thank you. Today was an early release day, as you know. Uh, it was a workshop day for teachers. It was building based, uh, dedicated to presentations of impact, which is basically a time that gives teachers an opportunity to showcase um, the work that they've been um, doing and accomplished this year in their PLCs. This is actually our final PD day of this school year. <coughs> so we are um, on to planning for next year. And I say that as a little bit of a teaser, and I'll give you more information um, probably at our next meeting. <laughs> uh, over the next couple of weeks, all students in grades three through eight will be taking the math and science, technology, and engineering MCAS assessment. And later in June, we will be administering the biology test. So parents should continue to um, keep an eye on that calendar. I also wanted to mention that due to a firmware update to our system, we experienced some issues with our wireless access points in the connectivity to them. It was a little bit frustrating for some of us. Um, by that I mean there were 12 wireless access points at Center Elementary School um, that stopped working. So IT has been working to fix or replace these access points since the firmware update occurred, and we are well on our way. So we're confident that all access points will be fixed or replaced prior to our next MCAS administration. I've spoken to the IT director and he has outlined the plan and I'm confident that we'll be fully functional. Um, however, out of an abundance of caution, we will be running another infrastructure trial um, to, just to ensure that we're fully prepared for MCAS administration, but he has no concerns. Um, a reminder to families that term three report cards for students in grades five through 12 are currently live in Aspen and special education progress reports. Um, in terms of all of the, the drama going on in Tewksbury, congratulations to the cast and crew of Center Elementary School who performed Peter Pan Jr. last week. And it was absolutely outstanding. Incredible to see uh, fourth graders singing, acting, and bringing their characters to life the way that they did. Mm -hmm. um, you, could, you could really see that some of the kids are, are already actors, you know, and we're excited to have that opportunity. Um, a, a huge shout out to Principal Jay Harding, who pours his heart and soul into this passion project, and to Assistant Principal Rob Rogers and all of the teachers who volunteered a ton of time to support um, the success of this show. As a former principal, I simply cannot imagine, I cannot even get my head around how that is even possible. Mm -hmm. um, but he does it, he does it. Um, very professionally, it was amazing, really amazing to see, so um, kudos to everybody. And I, I know that if he was here, he would say um, that it couldn't have happened with all of the, the volunteers that he had, so. On uh, Thursday and Friday this week at 7 p.m. in the Wynn Middle School Auditorium, the Wynn Middle School's Drama Club will be performing The Hearing by Brent Holland. Um, this is a short, about, 40, about a 45 minute um, play. There will also be an additional performance as part of the 2024 Massachusetts Educational Theater Guild's Middle School Drama Festival on May 4th at 3 p.m. at Nauset Regional Middle School. Lastly, as a reminder, our 40th annual district-wide art show and band and chorus concert are coming up also this week, Friday and Saturday. The band and chorus concert begins at um, 6.30 p.m. and the art show is directly following from seven to nine on Friday and again on Saturday from 10 to do, and that's always a huge crowd pleaser. Yes. And then that concludes my update. Thank you. Um, any comments on Mr. Moncada? 
I'm uh, looking forward to the art show. Uh, yeah. My, my, my kids came up with something that says they're in it, so uh, hey, that's great. We'll, we'll show up and take pictures. So, but thank you. Yeah, Mrs. Anderson. I'm good, thank you. Mr. Russo? Uh, actually, just, just a uh, clarification. Um, you mentioned the firmware update. So have we done any um, sort of, um, I mean, we're 100% certain there was no cybersecurity yeah. breaches or anything like that. Okay, yeah. Yeah. fantastic. And then the second, the second piece was with the PD day today, because uh, I know that this came up recently <laughs> in negotiations. Were ESPs on that grid? Oh, well, they were. Okay. Yes. All right. Just double checking. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. That's all I had. Thank you. Okay. And Mrs. B. Johnny Smith. Um, just I, on the firmware stuff, which I'm not great at, but I know that people got, district employees got an email today, um, and I was going to ask it after, but where that came up. Um, like, I think students got this email, um, some staff got this email, I got it, um, mm -hmm. asking if we wanted a job as a mail clerk right. today. So I didn't know if that was something that had to do with that. No. Yeah. No. No. Different. no. Yeah, two separate things. Two okay. separate things. If I, if I can add a little to that, this has been an ongoing discussion, and and we can certainly have this discussion um, with IT director together if, if you would like. One of the problems that exists, and you'll start to see this in some of the school districts' websites, when there's a nice long list of everybody's email, it's really easy for things to go out bulk to all of us. It's and and it's been. Um, a problem, I would say, and where our, our team is really good at saying that's not real, you know, but we're, we're really questioning how, what's a better way of not having everybody's email just easily clickable and uh, in a short and easy list. So, um, but with, with not impeding any public person or resident or parent, you know, easy access to getting to one of us. So we're working on that, but we, it, it happens. And, oh, yeah. Just yeah. a question, though, but um, student emails are not... They are not. ...on the website, so how... Because I know that students got them, too. I don't know how... I, I, I'm not sure if they were able to link on to another uh, list or email that went out. Okay. And sometimes that happens. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. No, that, that came from an actual... Okay. Tuxbury address, so they use the Tuxbury address, and it looks like it's coming from a legitimate person. Yeah. Um, I, I, it happened to me yeah. um, only le like less than a month ago, and there was an email that went out to the entire district saying that I was seeking them to, you know. Right. So, we we need to um, figure out ways to just protect um, our addresses from easy access like that as well. Um, Certainly, there are people out there looking to, to do funny stuff that are much smarter than us at all of this. And um, I, I think we just need to have the discussion. If we're OK with securing us a little differently, w it, figuring out whether it's a form you fill out with who you're looking to talk to, some way that everything is not you know, lumped into an easy list. As you know, uh, public records requests ask for every email of the district and all of that stuff on a regular basis. And we know that people are getting that data for re nefarious reasons. Have we had IT in here for like a presentation it, we have, not that long yeah. ago? or That was one of the softer recommendations that came out of the audit too, is um, they're advising all districts, don't make it that easy to get a list of, of contacts. So, um, but we're public school. We want it easy for people to get in touch with us. So um, I think we're nearing really a, a harder decision on that. Yeah, it's going the other way. We got the project, what was the one we just got project? Lead your, lead the way, lead the way grant a couple of weeks ago and I got a contract from them to sign <laughs> the first thing I did was send it to Jason. I'm like, this is a scam. <laughs> yeah. 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 We, we, have a mis we mistrust, you know, a lot of mm -hmm. things that come our way, too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, if we could get an update, maybe, sure. um, on that, because we, we have an, a meeting on the 22nd. Um, but anything, I think, that you could give us additional information in terms of um, our overall cybersecurity, I guess, is... Okay. Kind of more maybe what we're all looking for. Yeah, I'd, I'd be afraid like just that gets into a student that they're just, they're just going to click on it. Like they don't they don't know to they you know like where, where I work it's like beat into me. Don't click on yeah. anything, you know. And a kid is just going to click on it. And then if that works its way through the system, then we are so. 
And keep in mind, our students can accept, there are those, the student email accounts cannot get email from an outside address. But, so it has to come from address but, being oh, used right, in, within, it, which is scarier because they think now I got this, it must her, be. Right, I mean, it's a, there's, I don't know all the cyber terms, but yeah, right, if mm -hmm. they're, if it, I just would be afraid if they click, they're not, they don't know to not click on something. Yeah. And it's just, then it wreaks havoc, so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So thank you very much, Mr. Yeah. McDermott. And uh, Mr. Libby. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, just a couple quick updates on um, some of our projects around the district. Our um, wind HVAC project uh, is advancing along. Our um, contractor requested a meeting next week to um, arrange um, working schedule for his crew uh, at the end of May to start working uh, some second shift um, pre-construction work up in our ceilings at the school. Um, so uh, they're uh, looking like they're uh, on, uh, on pace to, uh, to get that project completed over the summer as, as, is, uh, as we hoped. The um, work at the Heathbrook School, we expect the flood work uh, as part of the insurance claim, uh, replacing floors in the office area, teacher's room, uh, first grade hallway uh, to pick up again uh, right away in June, uh, shortly after school ends and the school gets emptied out. Um, the Heathbrook classroom, uh, we're still working out some dates uh, and uh, as far as the bid process goes with the classroom areas uh, that were impacted by the flood there. Um, so that's still in the bid process um, for those classrooms. Um, today, it being a half day, we also um, completed some Alice drills during the day. Um, Alice drills were the um, um, evacuation drills that uh, we practice uh, in conjunction with the Tuxbury Police. Uh, at our upper grade levels, they um, get some of, uh, some of their off-duty police officers to come in. Uh, they simulate a, um, in a uh, intruder into a classroom or a, or a wing of a school and um, see how folks react. Um, Students are usually prepped ahead of time to know what to do. Um, and the, uh, th those drills were conducted with the help of the Tuxbury Police at the high school, the Wynn and the Ryan today. Uh, the doing, uh, the younger grades conduct a more self-contained uh, drill, uh, but the doing conduct theirs today as well. The uh, Heathbrook and Center are scheduled to conduct theirs later this month. Um, and um, parents should be notified when those are going on and uh, after the fact that those have happened. Um, <clears throat> we were certainly more active with those before COVID. That sort of put a break, put the brakes on that activity and um, we're trying to get those uh, ramped back up in our schools to make sure we're, um, you know, getting back to the level of security we need to be at with uh, it, with our school buildings. And um, let's see, yeah, that was it. That's all I had for my report tonight. Great, thank you. Um, any questions, comments from the committee? Uh, just a quick question on the HVAC. I know the ESSER funding was up at the end of the year. Are we gonna make sure that we get, use all that funding? Yes. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. September uh, 24 is the uh, deadline to yeah. spend that and we're on we're on course to hit that. Okay, great. Yeah. No, all set. Ms. Beaner, yeah. no, and I'm, I'm okay too. Thank you. Um, I, I, could I circle back with Mrs. McDermott? I, you had mentioned, um, Richard mentioned something about the um, professional development. Um, I wanted to circle back just a bit on that. The presentations of impact. What does that look like when they, when they, people share? Yeah, they share their um, instructional challenges, how they addressed it, what the outcomes were, 
Um, yeah. so. They um, they document all throughout the year. So if a team says their instructional challenge is, let's just say, you know, um, kids have a difficult time writing, let's just say blah. And then they, uh, I won't go into all of it, right? But they, what would the best case scenario look like? So then what would do we need students to be able to do? What's our plan and process for that? And then they document that process. PLCs look at that data. They talk about that impact. They document what inter strategies and interventions worked. And then they, in the, the presentation of impact, that cycle may be happening in some schools three and four times throughout the year. So the cycle isn't always the whole year long. I can tell you what they're doing. We've already seen a sneak peek of theirs. Um, the, each of the grade levels really focused on vision of a learner and those standards that they put out. And they documented the cycle of building uh, an effective communicator, a collaborator, and so on and so forth. And they jigsaw, if you will, so if I'm sharing from the kindergarten team to someone on the first, so that they get to see each other's. Now the PLCs are learning effective strategies from each other with proven practice, or they're learning, well, that didn't get us the impact we wanted, so what will we do next? Mm -hmm. um, so the presentations really celebrate the work towards those goals with the data and the actual evidence of it showing. I mean, they're just really amazing. And um, the PLC facilitators take the lead, you know, on helping create that, but it really is a full PLC um, uh, goal. And then our principals will do the same thing in June. Um, Kale Burke will come back with us, and we're going to do some leadership presentations right. of impact to share in small groups and then jigsaw out the same. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Uh, it's that observable impact model we've been using now in learning and now implementing and facilitating. It's very transferable to anything that we want to do, which is really good. It's nice, though, to take the time to not only say this isn't working, try, 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 and come back and look at it. I mean, not probably um, dissimilar to a process you might take in a, any other field or, uh, mm -hmm. of business. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Um, all right, and next we have our consent agenda. Was there anything additional that you wanted to cover that was in there? Uh, saying goodbye and hello to some new people and uh, old friends, and uh, we wish certainly our uh, people planning on retiring well. well. That's a June meeting thing, though, I think, right? Yeah, <laughs> I think so. Um, okay. I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented in our packet this evening. Okay, now second. So we have a motion by Mr. Russo, a second by Mrs. Biagioni Smith. Um, to uh, accept the consent agenda as presented. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, and that passes unanimously. And, uh, moving on to our uh, school committee member reports. So um, this will be our last meeting with maybe some of these members on these committees. We'll see when we get to our next votes. But for right now, the CPAC, uh, Mrs. B. Johnny Smith. Um, yep, so the CPAC is actually meeting in two weeks. It's May 16th. Um, they'll have a reorg at that meeting. Um, but we haven't had one since our last update. Okay. Um, wellness advisory is Mr. Russo and Mrs. Biagioni Smith. Yeah, we haven't had any meetings since our last school committee meeting. So either we're meeting too frequently as a school committee or the <laughs> subcommittee is not meeting enough. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to plead that we're doing fine. <laughs> uh, and then uh, for policy, Mrs. Anderson, I'll have you update for us. Sure. Um, so the last time we went for policy was last Friday or Thursday afternoon. Um, we are working on some heavy hitting policies right now. The one um, with being wellness, uh, which we do have on the agenda today um, for an informational reading. Uh, the other one being homework. Um, so we got a lot of great feedback from the surveys that the district and um, all the principals have been working on. So we're excited to start to digest that and come up with a suggested uh, a change to the policy for potentially our next meeting um, so that we can have a new homework policy in place for the beginning of next school year. And then we can move on to um, reviewing the current policies that we have for adoption. Mm. Okay, so the first policy would be a first and final reading um, for the KFD use of school facilities for a candidate's night. Uh, we are recommending to approve with no changes. So any comments or thoughts on the um, wellness policy? Just a little feedback. Um, as I mentioned with Miss um, Mugford, this policy um, 
hadn't been looked at for quite some time. The policy, the uh, wellness policy, wellness subcommittee um, took this on uh, over a year ago to really kind of look at it mm -hmm. in depth, and they did, which included both the leaders um, of these two departments as well as all the members of the wellness committee. Uh, they then circled in DESE with us in the policy subcommittee to better understand if this was meeting the requirements that DESE, is, the Department of Education, is looking for. Um, and then uh, Mrs. Terry O'Regan took this to also our legal team to be sure that we were covering things the way we should um, so that we didn't have any blind spots in there. Yeah, was, and make sure that we're meeting both state and federal regulations through this policy because um, it, it does speak to to multiple ways in which we have to um, use this wellness committee and make us eligible for grants mm -hmm. and other kinds of funds. So yeah, um, and then I personally just had a kind of a conversation with some people at MASC in terms of trying to do some comparative um, what are other districts doing. So it's a pretty comprehensive policy. There's no doubt about it. Um, but ultimately, this, we kind of came back with this is meeting the needs of the two departments. It's it's meeting the needs of you know uh, the legal requirements. Um, so if you have any questions or things like that, this is just the inf informational presentation, and this will still come before us two more times uh, before we would formally vote on it. Mm -hmm. So any com I mean, conversation now? Okay, seeing none, uh, we can move on on the wellness. Well. Do we want to vote for that first one, KFD? First? Oh, I'm sorry. I was just speaking to wellness. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh -huh. yeah. So, okay. So, and then for the first and final, um, you have KFD. Did you want to speak to that at all, Mrs. Um, yeah, no. So we, we did a review of the, the current policy, and we believe that it uh, meets the needs with no changes. So we're going to recommend um, on a first and final reading to approve with no changes. Any comments so or conversation? Mr. No, I was just going to ask, is that a motion on the floor? <laughs> yes, I will make a motion to okay, recommend <laughs> KFD first and final reading um, to approve KFD use of school facilities for a candidate's night with no changes. I will second that. Okay. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, and that motion passes. So we will now have KFD um, updated in our policy manual. Um, old business, we have uh, school committee, subcommittee appointments. Um, that should have received uh, was in our packet so we could take this in three separate votes or all one slate of votes does anybody have any preference what, what, what are the does the negotiating subcommittee is that one so we have our negotiating subcommittees which is the TTA right teachers and aides custodians secretaries tag nurses and food services that's one that's one yeah. then we have our well, yeah, and then we have our school committee subcommittees, which is technically part of our negotiating. So that would be the negotiating subcommittees as well as school committee subcommittees, which includes wellness advisory, policy, and Tuxbury special, special education PAC liaisons. So that would be one section. The second section would be the Tuxbury Select Board appointed school committee representatives, which is the Long Range School Building Planning Committee, which is two members, the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Advisory Committee is one person and then the third vote could be school committee representatives on a district committee which is um, managed completely by the district and that's one person so we could vote as a full slate or we could vote three separate votes i'm content with doing the full slate as presented if i agree the is mm -hmm. on board yeah Same. the one notation i'd like to make um and if it's agreeable to the committee, um, would be that all school, any school committee member may serve as an alternate for members that not, are not able to attend um, any of the regular subcommittee meetings um, or uh, the representative on the district committee. This is not something that would translate to the select board appointed boards, but I think in terms of uh, just our busy schedules, we have a lot of work, the subcommittee work is, uh, pretty intense sometimes and um, for in terms of 
keeping things moving forward, it, it is helpful if one member cannot make something to then be able to have an alternate sit in. So mm -hmm. if everybody's agreeable to that, that would be um, part of the, the vote that we're taking tonight. Agree. So I'll make a motion to approve um, all subcommittees, whether they're school committee subcommittees or select board appointed uh, committees as presented this evening in our packet. I'll second. Okay. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. Great. It's easy. Um, next, we have um, our school committee meeting schedule. Mm. And this would be for consideration from anybody who's sitting at the table because we all sit here, to here together pretty often. <laughs> so, is there any questions, comments? or concerns with this schedule as presented. It's slightly different than the schedule we saw last meeting. Um, I revisited it with um, Mrs. Johnson and Mrs. Terry O'Regan, just in terms of alignment with some of the things in the district, as well as um, just kind of past practice and what's worked a little bit, and moving some of the meetings more towards the beginning of the month. Uh, we still would have our June, January meeting for the budget presentation is is separate there at the end of January and that gives us a little bit of an option to say that meeting could also be um, you know we could tack some business on there if necessary at that time but right now it would just be a budgetary um, meeting madam chair yes I may um, the only date really in question here right now is the June yeah. uh, 2020 Five school committee meeting and and the reason is we looked at the calendar for next school year if there were no snow days or even only I think two with that date we originally had on this calendar um, would be after school ended so given that we the first two Wednesdays in June don't work there are conflicts mm -hmm. I think it would behoove us to talk about maybe not now but prior to bringing this back maybe a Thursday in that second week of June. So you don't want to run into graduation and senior week, right? There's something going on every day and night, but maybe that second week on a Thursday, we wouldn't bump in to the Wednesday conflict. We might, wouldn't bump in in conflict with select board meetings. So I just put that out there as something to consider, and we can certainly bring an edited um, school committee meeting date calendar with that one change if this is amenable to everybody and is voted on and approved tonight so you're thinking the 13th of june, june I, I think that's right now and, and ms johnson and i looked at the whole calendar i think that is probably our best um suggestion so right now but we'd want to oh, think about all of the other things happening in june before yeah. we um well, commit and and obviously so, thursdays aren't a day you're typically used to having a meeting so mm -hmm. so are you thinking we should maybe preliminarily vote for june 12 june 12th thursday <laughs> 2025 and add that to this list that we have or just keep it as to be de determined only to de determine later I think whatever pleases the chair and the members of the committee but that that is the date we were considering was June 12th Mr. Russo? yeah I, I mean I guess two things one I mean it's April it's May 1st of 2024 the fact that we're looking out yeah 19 months honestly just seems <laughs> silly to me um, I get that this is how we've done it in the past. Um, I'm not sure, you know, and, and I'm not suggesting that we should do something differently today. I'm just maybe considering the fact that maybe we should be thinking about how we do this going forward. Um, I mean, here I am going to agree or disagree potentially on a June date, and I may not even be on the committee in June. Um, so it, it's easy for me to sit here and say one way or the other, but I, I just, we're looking at this on a calendar year basis and usually we look at everything on a fiscal year basis or maybe a school year basis school year calendar basis so this is kind of the only oddball thing that we do on a calendar year basis um again i'm not suggesting we do anything differently for this go around but maybe it's just something that as a committee maybe we should be rethinking how we look at these dates mm. um and then the, that was the first thing and the second thing is personally i i mean i I like the fact that we keep our meetings on Wednesday, so I'm not sure if that was a district thing, if it was a committee member thing, um, why we couldn't do the 11th of June. I completely uh, in agreement, Ms. Regan, that we should keep it during the school year, um, which would obviously put us in those first two weeks. Uh, and clearly, senior week is a very, very hectic no, week, and that's not going to yeah. be a good thing. So 
I, I, I'm not sure there, um, you know, what we would do differently, um, or why we would do it differently, I guess, maybe in that month. Do we have to give the town clerk a schedule at a, by a certain point in time during the year for the following year? Is it a requirement? No, I think we really put it out that far because we yeah. were doing other events and we're trying to let them know when their mm -hmm. meetings are. Okay. Yeah. 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 So might it be reasonable that we revisit this in the late fall? Sure. Mm -hmm. Or mid-fall? Mm -hmm. yeah. In terms of June, we could maybe consider the dates that are here. If nobody has a conflict, um, yeah. entertain a motion to approve as it is now with um, a revisit of the June date. Yeah. You know, come yeah. after the school year at least starts. I'd be Sorry, amenable to that. Yes. Okay. Okay. Is so I'll make a motion to approve the school committee 2025 dates as presented uh, this evening in our packet. I'll second. Okay. Motion by Mr. Russo, second by Mrs. Anderson. All in favor, please say aye. 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 And that passes unanimously. And I'm, I'm assuming since we didn't hear anything from <laughs> Mrs. McDermott or Mr. <laughs> Libby. <laughs> well, hold on. <laughs> How about you, Dave? That these all work. <laughs> Thank Dave, you. Are you so sure much. you're free in December 2025? <laughs> <laughs> I'm good, yeah. Right now I'm wide open. <laughs> it is, it's a, it feels far away. Um, okay, and so our next order of business the annual town meeting um, is going to be held uh, on Monday, uh, May 6th. Uh, there's a warrant article uh, number 14 which we had briefly covered, uh, Mr. Libby had briefly covered um, in our budget hearing. It was reviewed for its purpose at that time. It has since been uh, reviewed by the Finance Committee as well as the Select Board. Um, so I'm bringing this back to our committee here uh, to formalize uh, the school committee's uh, approval at their, um, at their will, if, if you uh, have approval, um, to uh, formally vote on that if there's a motion to do so. So just to clarify, Madam Chair, we're, we're, uh, we are um, making a recommendation as a committee right. that we are in support of Article 14. So uh, if that's the case, then I will make a motion to uh, recommend Article 14 for approval at town meeting on Monday, May 6th. I will second. Okay. Um, all in favor, I'll do a roll call because this is some finances. Uh, Mr. Uh, Moncada, how do you vote? Aye. Mrs. Anderson? Aye. Mr. Russo? Aye. Mrs. B. Joyce Smith? Aye. And I vote aye as well for a unanimous vote. Thank you, guys. Uh, that was more for the formality. Uh, next is under new business. I'll turn this over to administration to give sure. us some more information. All right, um, Madam Chair, what we have in front of you will require a vote of the committee. This is a an out-of-state um, request from a science teacher here, actually the department head of science at the high school, Mr. Eric Bland, and Ms. Stacy Mulholland, one of our tech coaches. They're seeking your approval for an out-of-state field trip um, for grade 11 students. Right now we have 14 students uh, to go to Kenny Bunkport, Maine, to the Corning Foundation. This is a free field trip um, that is intended to show our students how life sciences work in both manufacturing and engineering careers. The only cost to our students will be for the transportation for the bus. Uh, Principal Long is looking to minimize the cost for these students. Uh, there may be more students that wish to attend as well uh, by subsidizing the bus cost. So I can, uh, the, we're seeking approval to move forward with planning, maybe um, and getting some more students on board and I'll give you an update on what the final cost of for each student for the bus was at our next meeting. Okay. Any discussion? No. I, just, well, you have to I, I just have one quick question. Are the students uh, that are in any of the innovation pathways um, prioritized for something like this? I would say we will prioritize as many that we can fit in a bus. So right, okay. it's definitely going to span, you know, the careers of those interested in life science, manufacturing field, and engineering. So um, these are dream field trips, uh, mm -hmm. from my opinion. Mm -hmm. Anytime they can get a peek right. into the real world of using science in a career um, is beneficial. And you know, the Corning Grant has really supported our STEM programming. So um, if we had that level of, 
you know, um, interest and participation, we'd have to really look at who are the students that are asking and are they part of those programs if we had to prioritize. Okay. Or maybe get a second bus, but. Yeah, no, it, yeah. It's, it's, it's an awesome opportunity. Yeah. So, Mr. Russo. Actually, that was, I was gonna piggyback off that. And so, the, um, 14 students are attending this, so is it, only is it offered to a particular science class? Is that who this has been made available to, or I'm not sure. Okay. Again, some in information I can uh, right now. What I know from Principal Long is we currently have 14 that are interested, so I'm oh, expecting okay. there may be more. Okay. Okay. Understood. Yeah. Fair enough. Okay. Um. Uh, I'll make a motion to approve uh, the field trip, uh, out of state field trip, as presented for Wednesday, May 29th. Okay. I'll second. A motion by Mr. Russo, second by Mrs. Anderson. All in favor, please say aye. 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 And that passes unanimously. So um, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Th any update would be great, too. Um, new school committee matters of interest. Mrs. B. Joni Smith, anything you'd like to add? Um, I just want to. Um thank uh, the drama department at the Wynn. They took that field trip um, to run the tech on the competition for the play that's coming up this Saturday. It was a long night uh, for those volunteers, for the staff that volunteered and took the kids and the volunteers that went and took the kids. So just a shout out and a thank you to Mr. DePrima and that whole drama program and the team for going down there. And just one last, I know Ms. McDermott also um, mentioned the Wynn play tomorrow and Friday, but um, it's going to be a great event, and it, it is only about 40 minutes, so it's a one act. Um, so it'll be great. That's all. Oh, great. Thank you. Mr. Moncada. I mean, I went to the plays um, last week, so those, those, they were amazing. Uh, so applaud the students and the teachers. And all were involved, and um, obviously the win. So well, hopefully they'll, they'll have a good, good show as well. So, But other than that, I'm, I'm good. Thank you. Great. Mrs. Anderson? Um, I will um, third the plays. Um, I went to both Peter Pan and then the next day to the Adams Family, and I think the coolest part of it was seeing those little faces in the fourth grade play and just imagining them, you know, six years from now getting ready to open up at a, a play in the high school because I can see that some of those kids are going to be right there um, and engaging them and getting them excited about it so early is, is, is huge. Um, I also want to thank uh, the partnership that we have with the police department. Um, this today, actually, they certified almost 50 kids in CPR. Um, so that was great. Now we have a, a lot of kids that have those types of life skills. Um, and then I've, I've heard a couple times throughout the night um, that there's been surveys given to kids um, in different capacities and aspects. I think that's huge to give them you know, a QR code. That's how they speak now, right? To give them a QR code where they can give their feedback and then taking all that feedback, whether it's food services, whether it's the career fair or the college fair, uh, that's gonna be huge in, in helping to develop uh, the, these types of programs as we move along. So I'm really happy to hear that we're, we're, get it, we're asking for their feedback and giving them the opportunity to give it to us in such an easy way for them. Thank you. That's for it. Mm -hmm. Mr. Russo. Yeah, I'll, I'll echo the play. Uh, honestly, thanks to Ms. Garvey, too. I mean, she sent a, a nice big thank you uh, to the committee um, and, and shared it with us a nice little sort of behind the scenes video and whatnot. So I think that was really great. Uh, uh, and then also, just uh, to all of our educators out there, you know, um, you know it's Teacher Appreciation Week next week. Um, Again, I know it's uh, at times may seem like a thankless job, but I mean, from the bottom of my heart, I know that the effort and the things that you guys do to impact kids every single day um, just makes such an impact. Um, and so kudos to all that hard work um, that you do to impact and change kids' lives. Great. Um, I had that on my list as well. Sorry. Happy? No, I don't think we can say it enough. The you know recognition of teacher and staff um, at all the schools, at all the levels, um, how they interact with students, how they interact with each other, how they create uh, an amazing sense of community within each school, which somehow feels unique, uh, but yet feels like it's a part of the whole district. So um, I want to recognize that. Also, uh, Kay Kayla and I will be at Day on the Hill on Monday with M uh, MASC. Looking forward to that. And if anybody has been following around, along with some of the collective bargaining that's been happening, um, we have our website, but we are currently uh, 
just to catch people up to speed. We are engaging with six out of our seven groups right now. And, um, you know, we're very hopeful uh, to, that we can kind of get some of this done before the end of the, all of it done before the end of the school year. Um, but if you, anybody wants an update, we have been trying to update the website. So I just wanted to go there. Um, I'm looking forward to some of the award nights, the end of year activities, the field days, and um, just really, you can tell it's coming. The kids are <laughs> all riled up. Um, we have for some future school committee dates, May 6th is annual town meeting, and May 8th is special town meeting. The school committee will be in attendance for those. May 22nd, 2024, we have a regular meeting, which is just in a couple of weeks now. And June 12th uh, will be our final meeting of the school year. We have a future subcommittee and advisory committee meeting dates, the CPAC business meeting of May 16th, and also their elections. We also had an email recently, I don't know, did we pass the date, the deadline, for when their nominations are in? Yes. Okay, so hopefully that's all happening. Wellness advisory committee is June 5th, and policy subcommittee, Mrs. Anderson, did we choose a date? Mrs. I Mrs. don't think that we did yet. I don't think we did either, I think okay. With the new Exactly. So that is to be determined. Mm -hmm. um, and are there any future agenda items that people would like to see us bring forth in the next couple of meetings? Um, I'd like to have an update um, maybe by the end of the year on the yonder pouches at the wind and mm -hmm. see how that's going. Um, I know that they've been surveying the kids a little bit, uh, so I'd like to hear about those. I can tell you that we uh, had a reach out from a um, neighboring district right over the New Hampshire line, and they're coming to watch the whole process, and they're very... Um, thrilled that we're actually only in second week of implementation so they can just talk about all of the, well, it's current in everyone's memory, um, how it's working, how quickly and all of that. So um, I can tell you just a short and sweet that um, this week is far better than last and uh, it's going very well. But I also, Madam Chair, I do have on my um, homework to um, invite Mr. Stamp in here and I think maybe if we do two bullet points for him at the same time, some IT cyber security as well as um, maybe his own update because we generally will bring him in yeah, at some point in the year but we can focus on the IT side uh, mm -hmm. this time. That would be great and I think just a, a even if he touches on the math, I think that's just such a, um, a curiosity, at least of mine, yeah. um, is to just see how that's And he's that's the going. keeper right now of the data that we had for the homework policy uh, revisions that will be at forth forthcoming. So maybe if it's not May, it will be the June meeting, but we'll get him here. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. Right. Motion to adjourn. Okay. And second. We have a motion by Mr. Russo, a second by Mrs. Anderson. All in favor? Aye. 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 For 802, adjourn.